If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hi everybody, welcome back to another deck profile. Today we're doing Jewel Knights. So this is right before we get the cool uh, premium deck set for Jewel Knight Salome coming up later this year. So this is kind of what I'm working with now. And uh, I will be doing an update when we get that premium deck set. But this is what the Jewel Knight deck looks like for me right now. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Our starter is Tiffany because it's a Jewel Knight. And it actually does help just because you can still Soul Blast it out, put it back into the deck and as a Jewel Knight target. So that's just one more Jewel Knight to work with the deck. But just like all the other V starters, it's uh, if you ride a grade one or greater, you get a quick shield. Um, and draw a card. Moving on to the grade threes. I'm running two copies of Altmile because we're using the History Collection Goblade so that we're able to get some extra force markers um, and also just be able to stride while our opponent does that grade two. So still using this system, but you know, I, I've seen some decks that don't and I can understand why because you have to fish out the Altmile in order to use it if it's not already in your hand. And it's kind of a one-time thing. It doesn't really, uh, you don't really sit on Altmile for the rest of the game. But I am liking being able to use Goblade to do like an early game push when my opponent's at grade two. Then I am running three copies of Salome. I'm doing only three just because of space issues. And um, we really are only going into it as like a finisher. So if we do write it after Alt Mile, we do have it in hand and it's also searchable. So we have cards that can help search for it in the main deck. So I'm not too worried about it being at three. But what Salome does is at the end of the other attack, you kind of bust one. Um, you can call any number of Jewel Knights to Occupied Circles. Then if you call three or more, you Soul Blast four, Restand. So the goal here is to copy this unit skill Crystal Luster and be able to swing with my Vanguard with Triple Drive or Quad Drive twice. A second skill is when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, kind of bust one, that unit gets 10K in a drive. So that includes Striding. So you can, it's basically like stride skill, kind of blast, give it 10k in a drive, which is pretty cool. So Salome is the uh, finisher for Crystal Luster. Then we're running four Ashley, because this card is just too good not to run four of. It's at the end of the battle that it attacked, you Soul Blast two. Search your deck for a grade two or less Jewel Knight, call to rear. If this is on Van, you search for two cards instead of one. It also has it where any unit placed on this unit circle can kind of blast to get a crit. So it's the same as if you write it, copy it, uh, Crystal Luster will copy its skill. And then when it swings, it calls two things and it also has a crit. So, you know, that's also good as an alternative Vanguard. So you really much have like seven alternate targets, but this works on rear guard as well. Uh, but the goal obviously is to go for Salome. But that's it for grade threes. Um, we're gonna go into our grade two normal units now. So we're getting all the Jewel Knights out of the way. So we're starting off with four Lily. So Lily is your, when it attacks, um, you can put two normal units from your drop to the bottom. Soul Charge 1, this gets 5k. So 15k beater, fills soul, and recycles your deck. So that way you can search for cards with Ashley. It also has when another unit's placed on this unit circle, that unit gets 10k. So it kind of acts like its own little force marker when you call something on top of it. So I do like that a lot. It does suck when you have to ride it, and then you ride your grade 3, and then you stride so you lose the power. But, you know, it's a small loss. Uh, we're definitely running 4 just because the fact that it recycles gives power and is a free soul charge for the most part. Then I'm running for Sybil. I really like Sybil a lot just because it helps fill the board. What it does is when it attacks, fan or rear, you can put a grade two or less card from your hand to soul and draw a card. Then when another unit's placed on this unit's circle, you can look at the top three, look for a grade two or less jewel knight, call it, put the rest in your bottom. So that way you call on top of this, you call something else, kind of chain reaction going on there, which is really nice. And I like that it's a van or rear guard skills. This is like the ideal ride target here just to kind of help you get a free board and it also fills the soul by helping you cycle through your deck then i am running two copies of sword me so sword me is that a uh, age-old promo um, that's still pretty good you have to counter blast a card with jewel knight at its name in your damage zone uh, you search your deck for a grade one jewel knight call it to rear so it's super simple so it helps you fill the board i like this because you can search it with ashley um and you know there's pretty good Jewel Knight boosters that you know bounce back to your hand. Uh, and then I'm only running two just because uh, after you call on top of it, you can use Lily to recycle it, put it back in the deck. And I'll, also we're running non-Jewel Knight cards, so we're not guaranteed to use the Jewel Knight Counter Blast, so I don't want this to be kind of clunky where I can't use the skill. Lastly for two, I'm running Kidefall. This is the uh, Ride Fixer, is what they've been calling them. Uh, it has the skill when it attacks while it's boosted, you can bust one, search your deck for a grade two, call to rear. So I like this because it just searches out whatever you need, Lily, Sybil, or another Sword Me just to do attack extensions. I like this card a lot. It's really good with the Goblade turn because you can just 
search this out with Goblet, and then if there's a booster behind it, you get another attack afterwards. The other skill is at the beginning of your right phase, if your Vanguard's grade one or less, you can discard this card, look at the top five, uh, pick a grade two or less unit, add it to your hand. So that way you can use it for ride fixing, so you can get your ideal ride, and that way you're just not grade locked. So I like using it for that effect as well. So that's what I'm doing for grade twos. Grade ones, I am running our four copies of Eunice. Eunice is a really good booster. It's at the end of the battle that this boosted. You can put a normal unit for drop to the bottom, Soul Charge one, put this back into your hand. It also has the effect of when another unit's placed on top of this unit, you choose one of your opponent's rigors in the same column as itself and retire it. If there's nothing to retire, you can draw a card instead. So this is a good ride because typically your opponent won't have a rear guard behind their vanguard because we're not doing Forerunner anymore. So it's just a nice little draw when you ride on top of it, which is really nice. Then I am running three copies of Christine. Christine's a really good card uh, because it is searchable. And Christine also helps you find the grade three you're looking for. So what Christine does is when it's placed, you kind of bless one, choose a grade three card from your hand and reveal it. If you have three or more other rear guards with Jewel Knight in its name, you can search your deck for a grade three with Jewel Knight, call it, and at the end of the turn, you put the called card back into your hand, then you discard one. So this is really good because it searches out Ashley, and Ashley has a rear guard skill, so you can you know, extend and multi-attack thanks to Christine. It's also really good if you need Salome in hand and you just call this out, call a Salome, at the end of the turn it bounces, then you have that Salome in your hand ready to go for your finisher turn. So I like Christine a lot. I like that it doesn't need to counterblast a Jewel Knight. I, it does suck that you need a pretty good amount of board presence, so that's where Sword Me comes into play with that. So, uh, but this card is really, really, really good. So I like it at three. I'm running four, Cis or sorry, three Sicilis. Uh, this is the old Sicilis, which lets you search your deck for an alt mile. So when placed from hand, uh, reveal a grade three, and then you grab an alt mile, put it in your hand. Then if you added it, you discard a card from your hand. It also gets grade plus two when you stride, so we got some stride fodder, which is helpful. So we can go into Crystal Luster a little bit easier. The last uh, grade one I'm running is a little bit of like a tech card. I'm still kind of playing around with, but it's Packle. Packle is Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2. Um, it's just one of those weird scenarios where if you do need extra Counter Blast just to make some really funny plays, uh, you can, but you do have to be mindful that this is a very, very Soul Blast heavy deck. Um, and at the same time, you're soul charging a lot. So you kind of have to time it right, play this down, um, and then start soul charging, soul blasting as you go. But typically you're kind of like soul, bla soul charge two, soul blast two as you go through the deck. So if you have a bike, I wanna say six soul, you're pretty much clear to use pack goal, especially since we have triggers that help fill the soul now and all that early game stuff. But I like the counter charge because we have Sword Me, we have Crystal Luster, which is, you know, using Salome's Counter Blast for an extra drive. And we had Kiteful, which also uses Counter Blast. So I just wanna be sure that, you know, if I want to, I can kind of go full aggro using the skill. So if it's in my hand and I see it, I'll use it. If you don't wanna use Pack Gold, there are other V-Series Jewel Knights like Mor uh, Morbidus or uh, the other one, All Wayne, you could use as well if you would like, but I'm still testing out the Counter Charges this so far what I've been playing with. And lastly, of course, we got one copy of Elementaria Sanctitude, which is our uh, free PG in the premium meta because every Vanguard's gonna have triple drive. So gotta run it, make space for it. Then for triggers, starting off with our OT, I'm doing Valnot. Valnot is the over trigger where you can pick a rear guard that's standing and it gets at the end of the battle attacked, it restands. If you don't have a, a standing rear guard, you can, uh, draw a card, then call a card to the rear guard circle. So the reason I like this is because typically you attack with your vanguard last after you swing with all your rear guards after the Salome turn. So I do like that after you, you can drive check this, pick a uh, call a new unit to the rear guard circle, or if you wanna fill your board just in case you need another circle or another jewel knight or another card, just call on top of it. Valnot can help with that as well. And you can apply the 100 mil to your van either way. Uh, I was running the blue OT, uh, the one that gives a crit and lets you add something back to your hand. Either one works in my opinion. I just like this because it works really well early game as well. If you're on Goblade and you get it and um, you know you can call a card and give it 100 mil or you choose one of your other standing rear guards and it, you can swing twice. So that way if it's Ashley, you can swing twice with Ashley, which is nice. So. Uh, using that Soul Blast 4 to call extra attacks. So I'm been playing around with it, but I do like Volnot for this deck. Uh, then I am running our Alt Mile Crits, which is Bringer of Dreams, Bellinus. Bellinus has the Errata, where now it has 15 shield and 10 
uh, power for the trigger, and when it's damage checked, you draw a card. If you're on an alt mile Vanguard, you can move this to soul to draw a card when your Vanguard attacks. So yeah, like I said, we have non-Jewel Knight triggers, so you know that's why we're running the, <laughs> the sword me at two. And then Send Flare Draco Kid is our uh, helps you stride card. I'm doing this instead of Amulet Eagle just because uh, I do want to guarantee that I can stride. And even though we do have a good amount of grade threes and we have Sicilis, it's, you know, better safe than sorry in my opinion. You can run the Amulet if you would like, just to kind of throw it down, move it to souls, draw some cards. Um, can't go wrong with that, but for now I'm just doing the Scent Flares, but I might change it up later, you know, just to help fill the soul. Then I'm running three PGs uh, for Isolt, just because we have our one Elementaria. So that's filling up our Sentinel quota, but the draw PGs are nice, obviously, because draw triggers, damage them, drive check them. Isolt was a Jewel Knight once, which is kind of cool, so I feel like it fits with the aesthetic. Then for heals, I'm running Remedy Angel as one. This is the old one, but it's errated. Um, I don't have the updated artwork with the 15 shield and the 10k power, but they do the same thing. Um, it's when you G guard, you can bind another heal face up and then bind this face up to counter charge or soul charge. So I like having that option if I need more counter charge. And then three innocent ray for heal guardians. So 10k to van if your van's grade two or less and you didn't ride a grade three, or you can choose one of your opponent's units and it gets minus two crit to the end of battle. And when it's placed on rear, you can put a card from the top of your deck into your damage zone if you have no cards in your damage zone. So helps with that for early game if you need counter blast. But that is it for the triggers. Now we get into the G zone. Starting off for the G zone, I run two Gablade because we do it for alt mile. So Gablade still has the same effect where when it hits, you can search your deck for a grade two or greater card and call to rear. So what I like about Goblade is you can search out Ashley and call it, which is nice. The, the when an attack hits, uh, activates even if it didn't hit, so you're guaranteed to get Ashley. And obviously it's got the G-Zone effect. Uh, if you're on an alt mile Vanguard and you have no markers, you can stride, get two markers, um, and yeah, you can do that while your opponent's at grade two because it's an act ability. So that's why we're doing it this way, doing it the alt mile way. Then I got two Crystal Lusters. Um, this is like your finisher, your go-to guy. You know, typically you do your one, your first Crystal Luster, they're dead. The second one, they should for sure be dead. So Crystal Luster has one very, very simple, or very, very simple skill, and then the second one just makes it funnier. First skill is Act, turn a card in your G-Zone face up, and this unit gets all the original ability of your heart. So it copies Salome or Ashley, so that way you can swing and get some multi-attack off, and the GB3, is if you have three or more grade two or greater units, uh, when your opponent would call cards from hand of the garden circle, they have to call three at a time. This itself counts as a grade two or greater unit, so you just really need two additional grade two or greater units on your board at all times. Whoops. So basically you have a board of Ashleys or a sword me or something. As long as you're constantly shuffling between having a front row full of grade twos and threes, your opponent has to guard with three at a time from their hand, which can get really explosive during the game. The guard restrict is just kind of insane with this. Also the fact that it copies Salome's ability, so it swings with additional drive, quad drive, you do the skill, you restand, and it still has quad drive, so you swing again, and it has guard restrict, so you get a bunch of crits, and you know, this card's really, really good. Then I'm running two copies of Alt Mile. Um, this is literally flip fodder. <laughs> I'm not gonna deny it, but the idea is, well, it's an Alt Mile deck, so we're running Alt Mile cards for fun. And uh, you can use it if you wanna stride into it to call a grade two, but uh, it's literally flip fodder. So if you guys wanna run other cards um, or additional Crystal Lusters, you can run four Crystal Lusters if you want. That's the, just a flex, but this is uh, flip fodder. You just flip it. That's why I did it. Uh, I'm running one Saint Twin Sword. Um, I like it because you can multi-attack and as your G-Zone gets bigger, you can call a bunch of board. So when it attacks a Vanguard while boosted, turn a card in your G-Zone face up, search your deck for two grade two cards, call them to rear. And it has the second ability of any time a rigor is placed from the deck, the unit that's placed gets five cards for each face up card in your G-Zone. You flip something face up and after you've done your alt mile turn with your Goblade and your G-Guards and you know if you Crystal Lustered and you're just trying to push for game, that's like, plus 25, plus 30 to your called units, which is nice. And the other really cool thing is that's the other reason why I'm running grade twos like Cadfell or Sword Me. So that way when you use, Cat, you can call a Cadfell, have a booster behind it, swing, call another thing, and the thing called by Cadfell is gonna get power. So I like being able to use both of these for the Saint Twin Sword turns as well, which is nice. 
And even though we only run two of each, we have Lily to help recycle, put them back into the deck. Uh, Saint Twin Sword is still a really, really good card if you get all your good grade two pieces. Today I'm running one Elugius. Um, this is if you're like in a really, really tough spot. You got like three cards in hand and you're kind of behind and you just want to be able to, you know, make some markers, make some hand, be able to do something. Uh, what this does is when it attacks, you kind of blast, turn something face up in your G zone. Uh, you draw the same number of rear guards that you have, and then you call the same number of cards that you drew. So if you have three cards on your board, you draw three, then call three. After you call uh, those same number of cards, if the number total of your rear guards is five or greater, you can get an additional imaginary gift force. So if you already did your alt mile turn and then you decide to go into this, you swing, you know, you have three things on the board, you draw three, call additional three to other circles, and then get a marker. And hopefully you called on top of a jewel knight that gives you an effect to call more things. So kind of go from there. So Logius is still a really good situational card, gets an additional marker, which is nice. So can't go wrong with that. So, but I do run it the one of, cause like I said, situational. We had our one mandatory harmonics Messiah because it's premium and you have to have it for the guardian ticket. It lets you unlock cards. It prevents your opponent from damage denying you because you can put a card in your damage zone and then draw a card. So, but yeah, it's a like man, pretty much I feel at this point, it's like a mandatory card for the format, which kind of sucks that it wasn't a box topper. I really wish it was, but in good news, this comes in the premium deck set for Jewel Knight. So you don't have to worry about it if you do plan on picking up that you know, deck set. It comes with harmonics. So I wouldn't worry about it now. If you don't have it now, just wait until they come out and then you should be good. For G Guardians, I'm running two Maskell. Uh, Maskell is just pretty good and also helps fill up your G zone for cards like Saint Twin Sword to make them bigger. What this does is when you guard with it, flip another G Guardian face up, 10K shield. It only works if you have a grade two unit on your board. So just keep that in mind. Two copies of Morgaus. Morgaus is a G guard that can be a PG, kind of, where it turns a grade two into a PG. What it does is it chooses a grade two unit. It gets, it gives that grade two unit 10K shield and the ability of when that unit intercepts, you can counter blast one, soul blast one, and it turns that grade two into a PG where the unit being attacked cannot be hit. I kind of don't like the fact that they made this card have it so that the grade two has to intercept in order for it to work. I wish they would have just made it like, if you have two or more grade twos, you can pay the cost and then you PG, but um, yeah, G guard pool. Uh, I am running e one copy of Egrain because we do have an alt mile Vanguard and we're all gonna, all gonna be an alt mile for a turn. So what Egrain does is it has the brave ability when you have three or less cards in hand, this gets five shield. It also has when it's placed on guard, if you have a Vanguard with alt mile in its name, um, you can Soul Blast one, 10K power. So it's a it's a 25K shield if you Soul Blast. It's basically the same as Mass Goal, but it, like if you don't have a board and you have a grade two, you can at least go into this for the shield. And if you have the Brave active, it's a, a, a 30K shield. Again, situational, but it's there. And I am running one Andragius. Uh, this is also mostly flip fodder because you flip it with Mass Goal skill, but it has a continuous ability if you have two or more grade two rear guards, it gets 10K shield, so you can do that um, instead of mask goal for whatever reason, but it's pretty much flip fodder for mask goal. And then lastly, our dismal. Dismal is just really obvious because uh, you have certain cards like Ashley that you don't want your opponent to bully and get rid of. So you can go into dismal just to be able to G guard and then you know protect some pretty key cards on your board. So can't go wrong with dismal. But that is it for the deck profile. That was all I really got. I guess I can kind of show you guys what a quick little turn will look like. So I'll show you that right now. All right, so let's say you've already done your alt mile turn. You got your two markers, your god blades are face up and you're ready to start your Solome turn. Um, for this example, I just randomly don't have any rear guards, but we'll build the board anyways. So the goal is to ride in Salome after doing your big old turn, make sure you get your additional marker. Let's put it on our rear guard so that way we can, uh, you know, beef up that column. Also, I personally don't really have a preference. It just depends on how the game's going. You can do force one, force two. Having your front row with force two markers can be a lot of pressure as well, depending if you're trying to catch up. But for this example, we're just gonna go with force one. Before we get into it, we're gonna have to stride as well. So we're gonna discard our grade three to go ahead and stride into our Crystal Luster. So then with the effect of Salome, we're gonna go ahead and Counter Blast to give our Vanguard 10K and an additional drive, which is pretty helpful. And then we'll use the Vanguard's Act ability to flip a G unit face up 
and we just copied our heart's ability. So now we are Salome again. So we can just start kind of building the board. This isn't anything crazy. I'm not like trying to make like a, oh, this is like the perfect board. This is honestly just kind of like a random hand that I kind of cr came up with. Um, but in this sense, this would probably be the ideal thing to do. You'd probably want to swing with a column like this and then, you know, use Sybil to move a card to hand to soul, draw a card. Oop, that's a pretty good jewel knight to have in hand. So hopefully you got some, uh, some Ashley's in hand instead of uh, what I got. Then you can use the Eunice, put something back in the bottom of the deck. You can soul charge again, bounce this back to your hand. Swing a bunch with this. We can put some more normal units if we have them. Yeah, we do. Put them to the bottom of the deck, soul charge some more. We got a pretty decent stack of soul going so far, so we're pretty good with that. Then we can go ahead and swing with our Vanguard that has 38k and quad drive and your opponent has to guard with three at a time. So depending on what we have, we got a heal, not bad. Heal, powers on, everything's just going to the Vanguard for all this stuff. Draw triggers, no crits unfortunately, but we do have three Jewel Knights to work with here. So we're probably gonna be calling those to our three occupied circles. So we use Salome's skill and we're going to boop, boop and boop. So we got some more Jewel Knights. We did call three or more Jewel Knights so we can Soul Blast four. And you kinda wanna pick some Jewel Knights obviously because you're gonna put those back into the deck. Um, maybe for this example, I'll put back goal. Back goal back, can't go wrong with that. Soul Blast four and our Vanguard restands for an additional attack. We also need to resolve the abilities of the cards we called on top of. So with Sybil, we look at the top three. Hopefully we get a grade two or less Jewel Knight. We did. Uh, you know what's really funny? We can just call this on top of that and make that even bigger. Rest go to the bottom. Uh, let's resolve the Lily on here. That gets an additional 10. We can resolve the Lily on here. That gets an additional 10, so that's an additional 20. Depending on what happens with Eunice, maybe there's a rear guard in the same column, we retire it. So now we get three additional attacks. Uh, if you're good, Maybe you got a Ashley and you got that on the board for extending your attacks. That's a possibility as well. So you do attack with your Vanguard, get another four drive checks. That's really nice in OT. So now you can pick your rear guard and you get 100 mil and it can make an additional attack. What was that? My third, fourth check. So unfortunately no crits with those drive checks, but you kind of get the idea then you Swing, do the skill, swing, do the skill. Again, if you had Ashley, you could use the skill to Soul Blast, call another card from your deck to the rear guard circle, and maybe the card you call from the deck. If you have the Jewel Knights, you could call a Sword Me, and then your Sword Me calls you a booster. You can kind of keep going with some funny stuff like this, but the idea here is that you're doing all of these attacks while having the GB3 live and your opponent has to guard with three at a time. The one thing I will mention about this deck is that if you're playing against a control deck and let's say you've got like your, you got like your ideal board and you're like, oh yeah, I got my three rear guards and I'm going to uh, swing and get the attack started. Um, if you're playing against something like Night Rose or Narukami and they blow up, some of your rear guards and now you're left with two, your whole Salome combo is dead. So I would say that in those matchups, like if you're playing against like Night Rose or some type of control deck that it, if they interrupt your board, shuts you down, I would say Ashley is the better Vanguard because then at least you can go into Crystal Luster and then you can Soul Blast two after your Vanguard swings with an additional crit and just call some additional grade two or less rear guards. For example, you could then call like a Sybil and a Christine. And then if you have three or more other Jewel Knights, you can counterblast, search your deck for an Ashley. And then now, boom, you have an Ashley on your board, thanks to Christine, ready to go for this pretty big, massive turn. And you got another attack. Boom, Ashley swings. You can use this Ashley skill to call, if you have the counterblast, another Sword Me. You counterblast again. Boom, use Christine, Christine's skill, counterblast, search out another Ashley. And then you go swing, swing, this skill. You can search out another grade two from your deck, that's a Jewel Knight, and just keeping it going, you know? So there's still ways to get around control decks if you decide to go the Ashley route instead. Um, but obviously the goal here is to go into Salome for some double Vanguard swings. Woo, that was a lot. Thank you guys for watching. Um, this was my fun little Jewel Knight deck. It's not perfect. I'm, it's still got its flaws every now and then, consistency issues in terms of uh, finding the right Jewel Knights just by drawing into them and you know 
stuff. Overall, I'm still having fun with the deck it is is. Now it's it's a fun, casual premium deck, as, at least in terms of how casual goes for Royal Paladin. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate coming out and watching these deck profiles. Hopefully you guys can see some games with this deck in the near future. And that'll be it. And that's it for me. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all in the next one. And that's it for me. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.